Well, uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Mesa. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, uh, Nadia Mesa, and our three kids, uh, Seth, Abby, and Tabitha. All right, my name is uh, Jonathan Mesa. I'm the director of Spanish American Evangelism. Uh, my family and I moved down about four years ago and we've been uh, handling operations down there. Spanish American Evangelism, or SAEM, uh, has been around since uh, the 60s and so it's been a great honor for us to uh, be continuing this uh, legacy of work on the El Paso Juarez border. We consist of uh, missions, uh, ministry, uh, benevolence uh, ministry, and a media ministry. We're most known for our printing uh, ministry, handing out tracts and uh, literature, teaching literature for uh, churches in Mexico. So we're very grateful to churches uh, like you that support us and make this work possible. And thank you so much for having us here. One of the prayer requests that we've had uh, has been that the Lord uh, increase our, our influence and in ministry where we're at. And so we're very happy about that because he has done exactly that. And uh, churches started noticing. And so they approached us and said, we like what you guys are doing. Can you come and do that at our church? Uh, and so we're just, we're really happy about that because the Lord has answered the prayer that he's allowed us to uh, be a, a better influence in the ministry uh, there on the border. And uh, we're just, we're really happy about that. And now, uh, thanks to that, we have our goal of, of helping 750 families uh, in 2022 with uh, care packages uh, and the gospel. And it, this is to help those families, but also to help the church. And so we're really happy about that. In our media ministry, which is really what we're most known for in, in the Spanish speaking world, uh, our printing presses broke down in December. And so that's been a real struggle for us because uh, that's that's kind of how most people know us. Thankfully, j just right before coming up with you guys, uh, we were able to secure the delivery of a new machine, new to us anyway. And so we're, we're hoping that'll get us back up and running and uh, now we'll just have to figure out you know, how we pay for that machine. And so uh, we can really use uh, your prayer and, and helping us to be creative with our fundraising. <laughs> As far as that goes, our, our missions ministry uh, really has started to mix with our benevolence ministry because uh, th there's a lot of, of uh, problems sometimes with benevolence ministry. You end up having a really weird relationship with the people that you help and sometimes they feel obligated to uh, attend church or, or to listen to the gospel because you're giving them something and that's something that we really struggled with because we didn't want to have that kind of a relationship with people. We wanted to have a relationship with them where we as a church do our part to help the community, but we wanted them to have a genuine relationship with God. And so uh, our benevolence uh, efforts have been working in that direction. And now the churches are starting to notice that it's an effective method of working with them. And so now what we really need help in prayer is that the Lord give us wisdom on how to prepare and train the church to know how to use the information that we're giving them about the people that we're helping. The gospel tracts that most people hand out on the street and things like that, um, that that's our bread and butter. That, that's really what we what we do, what we're known for. Um, you know, in the States, it, it's, it's almost an invasion of privacy to come up to somebody's front door and give them something because strangers don't usually come to your front door unless something's wrong or they're selling you something. Uh, but in Mexico, uh, and most of the Spanish-speaking uh, countries, it's a very normal thing for somebody to just come up and knock on your door for whatever reason. And so having these kinds of conversations uh, is, is socially acceptable, if you will, and having those tracks uh, is just a great tool to be able to do that. At our peak, uh, back in like the 80s and 90s, SAE was producing about six million tracks a year. Um, and so throughout the years, uh, you know, as digital has come on board, a lot of that need has gone away. Uh, also, a lot of our designs just really weren't keeping up and, and so it's kind of, it might seem a little shallow to say that we need to have a nice design for people to read, but truly the, the only function that the gospel track has is to start a conversation. And with our, our current uh, way of thinking, if it's attractive, then they'll look at it. Our tracks uh, are, are used mainly locally because that's, you know, our immediate sphere of influence. But no, we, we get requests for tracks from all over South America, Latin America. Um, we send some to, to Cuba, and that's like a real uh, interesting portion of work for us. It, it's kind of a project. Uh, in fact, we were in Cuba trying to get a printing press started there uh, just because shipping tracks to Cuba is just so cost prohibitive. Uh, we, we took an exploratory trip a few years ago, um, and nothing's really come out of that because every time that we try to figure out how to send a printing press down there, uh, you know, we, we can equip a printing shop for about $10,000. 
and get it down there. It's just getting it down there. We haven't been able to figure that out. So for now, what we do with like the Cubans, whenever we know somebody's going over there, we try to coordinate and get them to take some literature with them and fly it into the country. But no, our, our tracks go, you know, pretty much anywhere that the Spanish speaking world is at. We, we do a lot of tracks in, in the States as well. We, we get a lot of requests for uh, for tracks in the States. When we started looking into the digital tracks, we were actually thinking more about the American community than we were uh, about other places. But the more that we started to think about it, even when we went to Cuba, uh, there's nowhere in the world that doesn't have a smartphone anymore. You know, it used to be with like the paper tracks, if you wanted to reach 100 people, not all 100 of them are, are gonna be moved by whatever message is on this track. But you would have people that would be, and, and they would seek, you know, further information from whatever piece of paper that you gave them. But trying to make contact with 100 people meant you needed to hand out 100 pieces of paper. If I get this gospel tract, and I'm one of like the 10% uh, of the people that get a gospel tract that's gonna look at it, I'm looking at it online, and as soon as I share it on my Facebook, I've at least multiplied that by the 200 people that I have on my uh, my friends list. You know, so uh, the, the digital aspect of it really allows us to to multiply our reach. Now we're just a touch away from them saying, "Hey, I'm I'm interested. Can I get some more information?" Um, and so that's where we're hoping to really go with the digital part of it. Spanish American evangelism actually started out, or one of its main components when it started, was church planting. When they started that, that ministry, Brother Bill Morgan uh, agreed that you know he would plant churches on the American side and Freeman Bump was gonna be planting churches on the Mexican side. And uh, he planted about five churches uh, in Juarez and those five churches have now grown to uh, about nine or 10 other churches uh, just in the city, uh, or not 10 other churches, but nine in total. And then in neighboring cities or towns, uh, the church is growing out there in that direction as well. So that was kind of how SAE started, but really after about the 80s, that portion of the ministry kind of faded away. So when when uh, my wife and I came over to SAE to start directing it, that's one of the things that we wanted to do. We wanted to get back to our roots of church planting. That's the, the missions portion of it, is, is we're getting back into church planting. We also help coordinate a lot of other mini, uh, ministries and missions that go down to the border. We do have uh, an extensive uh, network of churches and ministries that we know, and so we, we've had calls before from other ministries that, hey, we'd, we'd like to take a group down, but we don't know what to do or or who we can reach out to. And so that's one of the things that we can help out with. I grew up doing a lot of translating like that for mission groups. And so that's kind of one of the things that SA can also do is you know, if you guys need a translator, when you go down there, we'll throw you in there, you know, someone that can translate or that can navigate the city for you guys and, and things of that nature. Our offices are in El Paso. So we do get some English speakers that, that will go in there. Uh, so if, if uh, you get a little homesick and you only want to be stateside, uh, we have plenty of work to go around. Uh, but the best way to learn Spanish is by immersion. But if you want to come down, you'll, you'll get to experience church in a completely different environment. Uh, I never really appreciated this uh, because I've, I've always kind of had a foot on either side of the border. But when I went to Cuba, I mean, it just, it rocked my world. It was, it was a completely different culture. I thought, well, they speak Spanish. How different can it be? It, it was totally different and it really gave me a fresh perspective on what it means to be a Christian. And, and I'm sure that if you've never experienced uh, the church in a separate culture the, other than where you've grown, uh, it's gonna be a huge benefit. You know, you're, you're gonna grow to appreciate just how diverse the body of Christ uh, is. Que tengan un buen fin de semana de parte de la familia Mesa.